Hey guys, how's it going? It's Matt from Fidelity Gaming TV, and welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Mariners franchise here on OOTP 16, episode number 5. Sorry for the delay, it did not mean for that to happen. I went out of town and something happened, and I thought I was going to be able to record it, and I couldn't, so it did not mean for that to happen. Probably won't happen again. Episodes will be consistent. So this is episode 5, I believe, and um, this is not a live commentary. I had a live commentary, but... The gain on my microphone was turned all the way up instead of turned all the way down. I don't know why, so it sounded very, very bad. And you can hear all the background noise, and it's just garbage. And I did not want you guys to go through that. So you're going to hear my nice, soothing voice. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, just, just thought I'd do this. So this is not a live commentary, but you're seeing here the standings as the Mariners are one game back of the division. Astros are in the lead. And the Rangers are tied with them. We are also one game back in the AL wild card. So not in the best divisions, which is kind of helping us out here with the 26 and 23 record here in June. And um, yeah, last time we just did the first year player draft and we're doing okay. You see here we signed our first three picks, uh, first round, first round supplementary and Kyle Muller, the starting pitcher we selected in the second round. So even though uh, Cole Jackson says it's extremely hard to sign him, He'll probably sign because most of these guys sign even when um, they don't or even when their signability is bad. So anyways, we are going ahead and just showing you this and yeah, just showing you that I submitted offers to the first three guys and nobody else. I did want to get a starting pitcher in the second round just because we hadn't got one for a while and I thought that uh, it'd be a good idea to get one. So that is that. So we'll go ahead here. And let you know that I am going to be simming up all the way to the All-Star Game. Not going to the International Free Agency, but just to the All-Star Game. Where I'm going to show you who gets picked and who doesn't get picked. And our record. So let's go ahead and do that. We sim forward. And actually before we go there, we have a trader proposal from Cleveland. They want to give us Trevor Bauer, which is crazy because we need him. That'd be good. That'd definitely help our rotation. For Luis Gohara, who is a left-handed pitcher on our team who is a four and a half star potential if I can um, look at that I'll show you in a sec here four star potential so not that good or sorry not like amazing but still pretty good and they also want this left fielder who's not that great but I will go ahead and make this trade happen just because he's 19 years old this uh, pitcher and he's not going to be with us for another five years and I don't see this uh, going the series going another five years so Basically, we're going to get Trevor Bauer. We have a lot of righties in the uh, pitching rotation, but he will hopefully fit in nicely. And you'll see here our pitching staff doing okay here as we will have to send Erasmo Ramirez down, which is fine because he's supposed to be in the bullpen anyways. The um, assistant coach decided to put him in the uh, rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and make this trade here for um, Trevor Bauer and... That will be the trade we make before the All-Star game. So that is that. I think it's a good deal. We'll go ahead and call everyone up that we need to call up as we will complete the trade. And now we will go ahead and send to the All-Star game, which we were supposed to do last time, but got interrupted. So here we go. Here is the um, update. We are now 47 and 41 here with um, we are in second place. Six games back now in July 19th. Really um, died down. You see that Rangers did as well. The Mariners, the A's, and the Rangers are all kind of at the six, six and a half mark behind the Astros. The Angels are way down there at the bottom. And uh, in the wild card, though, we are a half game back, so that is good. Our record's not the best, 47 41, but we are a half game back behind Detroit. And then Baltimore and Boston are tied up in their division in the AL East. So, really, um, yeah, just even though we're not in the thick of it really for the division, we are close, but not really. We are pretty close in the wild cards, so we have that to worry about. If we um, don't win the division, we can always win the wild card. We're in the thick of things there, so that is good. Um, now I'm going to be showing you guys the news and the All-Star voting results. For us, we did get Felix Hernandez. He is the most voted starter. He's 10 and 5 with a 2.88 ERA, and um, yeah, obviously five-star overall, five-star potential. You kind of expect that to happen. Um, other than that, though, the only other player was Robinson Cano, second baseman. This time, he's not injured at uh, 33 years old, four and a half star potential, four and a half star overall. And here's the National League. So, 
If you see your favorite player, go ahead and pause the video um, or to look for your favorite player to see if he made the cuts. Everything was pretty much normal and uh, that is that. So now we are going to be checking up on all of the stats. You see the ERAs are somewhat decent. Trevor Bauer, the new addition, is doing okay. He's, his ERA went up a little bit, so kind of worried about that. You see we only have one lefty in James Paxton, so do kind of have to look for lefties here. If we are going to make another trade, so we'll have that here as you see me doing weird things with the mouse. And our closer, Danny Farquhar, is doing very well. He's on fire with a 3.5 star potential with a 2 ERA. He's 4-1, and one. so very nice job um, by him. He's doing very well. And that is our pitching, and we will go over here to our batting after we show all the overalls. Look at the overalls of our pitching, like a 5 star, 4.5, 3.5, 3.5, and then a two, I think. So yeah, our pitching is very good. ERAs are decent. Hopefully those can get better. But here is our batting. Let's take a look at the lineups here. Uh, catcher Mike Zanino is going to be hitting 256. So that's decent, I guess. I'd like to hit him to hit a little better as he's like a four and a half star, I think. Um, then at first base, uh, these two guys are splitting it off. They're hitting about the same 250-ish. Robinson Cano hitting 302, so that's more Robinson Cano like at second. That's good to see. At third, we have DJ Peterson and Kyle Seager kind of splitting things off. Uh, Peterson's hitting 284, and Seager's hitting 263. And at shortstop, Jed Lowry and Chris Taylor are sitting behind Brad Miller, who is hitting 284. Lowry is hitting 256, and Chris Taylor is really struggling at hitting 128. So that is that. Um, as far as um, Nelson Cruz, he got injured again. He keeps getting injured. It's really, really annoying. So um, as soon as he gets injured, I'm going to have to put him back in here because we definitely need him at the DH spots. Uh, but in left, we have Charlie Blackman, who's hitting pretty well. Uh, not the most at-bats, but he's hitting 331. That's good. Austin Jackson, leadoff man, hitting 230. Can't ask for much more. And then the right fielder, Steven Piscotti, hitting 251. Again, can't ask for too much more. You do see, though, that Austin Jackson is cold. So hopefully those guys can get better as we are in the home stretch here of the season at the trade deadline. The... All-star break. So basically, it's the second half of the season, and that is that. So we'll go here to the trade deadline. We have a pretty good trade here. Chris Taylor, the shortstop, who is struggling for us, and Hisashi Iwakama, who is a righty, for Garrett Cole and Francisco Liriano. I don't know why they gave us this trade. The trading is at normal or average, whatever they call it. And I'm thinking about making it hard because this is kind of a weird trade. They wanted a bunch of prospects and um, the shortstop, the starting, starting shortstop, Brad Miller, who is a lot better than Chris Taylor. But I put in Chris Taylor instead and I also put in Hisashi Iwakama so and then I need a left-handed pitcher so I put in Francisco Liriano instead of a closer they wanted to give me who was not as good as our closer Danny Farquhar so I decided to go ahead and go with this trade as Garrett Cole is a very very good pitcher Liriano not bad himself Garrett Cole is a four and a half star potential four and a half star overall and Liriano is a three and a half star potential or sorry two and a half star potential two and a half star overall so these are two very good pitchers they're really going to help our rotation out Chris Taylor we're not losing much because he wasn't batting good anyways he wasn't even playing much anyways and Hisashi Iwakama is getting old and it's going to be easily replaced by Garrett Cole so now we will stand to the end of the season and it's just really disappointing our record is 79 and 83 we're in fourth place 14 games back and we're not going to make the playoffs I am honestly at a loss here I don't know why this is happening. I've done this in the past with like test runs before I started this series with like the Chicago Cubs where they basically have four and a half star overall players, four star players, five star players. They're really, really good and they won't even make the playoffs. So the simming engine really isn't the most accurate out of all of them. Kind of wish it was more accurate, but um, well, what happens happens. The A's come storming back. They are now 93 and 69 and win the division just by one game. So good for them, but uh, yeah, the Mariners, yeah, they, they blew it. I don't know what happened. I honestly don't know what happened. We'll look at the teams here in a sec. Nobody did like really bad. Like, okay, maybe they didn't do the best, but like we were hitting pretty decent. It wasn't like amazing, but it was it was pretty decent. I don't know why we did this bad. We're hitting decent. Um, and also again with the simming, I don't know why the players that I have are good. Four star potentials, four and a half stars, some five stars. They're just performing, you know, mediocre, which isn't bad, but you'd think that with those overalls they perform better. So I really don't know. I'm kind of at a loss here, but I'm just hoping that uh, we can make the playoffs next year. It's gonna have to have a, we're gonna have to have a pretty big offseason. You see, Trevor Bauer did struggle a little bit with a 5.03 ERA. Maybe you're gonna have to deal him for a lefty, but I just think something has to change here in Seattle. The players we have should be doing good, but aren't. So we're gonna have to go 
and shake something up as this team did struggle and are not doing very well. So that is that for this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy. Sorry it was kind of weird with the voiceover. It probably won't happen again just because the game will be fixed on my mic. But um, yeah, you see that uh, Nelson Cruz did get injured again. So he's gone. He got injured for the rest of the season after that one injury. And it was just... It was it was bad. So, anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy the episode. The next episode should be a live commentary, and hopefully, we will start off. Uh, the next episode will be in the off season. We're probably gonna shake some things up. So, stay tuned for that. Should be a pretty big episode. I don't know if we're gonna get any games done. Maybe opening day, but I don't know about any simming. So, again, for the third time, hope you guys did enjoy the episode. If you did, go ahead and drop a like. Otherwise, make sure to go ahead. Stay tuned for the next episode, episode six, in the 2017 season, and we will see you later. Make sure to subscribe, and as always, peace.